The U.S. House Committee on the Judiciary has criticized President Donald Trump for ignoring the issue of gun violence in his State of the Union address. I'm disappointed that in his lengthy State of the Union address last night, President Trump did not see fit even to mention the need to protect our citizens against gun violence. But it is evident from the energy in the crowd in this room, as well as the millions of people across the country fighting for sensible gun safety laws, that the public is demanding national legislation too. I'm particularly heartened by the mobilization of so many students and young people from diverse backgrounds and from every part of our nation who are now at the forefront of this effort. Jerry Nadler made the remarks during the first hearing on gun violence held in the House of Representatives in nearly eight years. He slammed Congress for failing to address the issue in recent years, adding that gun violence has turned into an epidemic plaguing the United States. Nadler called on the government to take practical measures to tackle the problem. The hearing came a week ahead of the anniversary of a school shooting in the state of Florida in which a gunman killed 17 people. The incident marked the deadliest high school, bombing, high school shooting in U.S. history. Jason, uh, Jason, a political commentator and analyst, is going to be with us. Hello, Jason. Do you have my voice? Yes, I do. Okay, lovely. Thanks for thanks for being with us. Am I correct in uh, Am I correct in quoting Amnesty uh, that 30,000 deaths a year occur in the United States? Gun violence deaths occur in the United States annually, including children and that among comfortable countries, 80% of gun crime is of the U.S., happens in the U.S. How is it that it took um, the, the House eight years to address the issue, in spite of campaigns, anti-gun violence campaigns going on in the U.S.? Well, I think we have to understand the gun culture that exists in the United States. I mean, it, when we look at the Constitution, we see that the right to bear arms is one of the founding issues of the entire country. I was supposed to say the Second Amendment. This was the second most important thing to the founders of the country next to freedom of speech. So when you go up against gun ownership, you're going up against one of the fundamental issues that uh, makes the, found, the very foundation of the country. And this becomes a constitutional legal question. Where does the ability to restrict firearms come into play when we consider that the Constitution is the, the end-all, be-all of law? And we must also consider that the the gun lobby in the United States spends an extraordinary amount of money buying politicians, buying influence within the government in order to be able to have their products available to the public. I mean, it is, it is a tech, a technically by the right of the Constitution for them to be able to sell firearms to the public. And, you know, the uh, politics is more about money than it is politics itself. Now, much of the support for uh, guns in the country, uh, particularly with regards to the positions of the current President Trump. Uh, the firearms industry has put an astronomical amount of money into civilian firearm ownership and even greater amounts of money into the military industrial complex of the country. Culturally, guns are very, very significant to Americans, uh, particularly when you look at uh, many of the Hollywood movies, and not just Hollywood movies now, but movies going back almost to the beginning of cinema in the United States, guns have always played a predominant role as the protector, uh, the enforcer in a very a glorified state as a means of not only defense, but as a means of coercion. I think that uh, to, to tackle gun violence in the United States requires uh, not just some kind of legislation to control the distribution of firearms, but something that tackles the culture as well, because a gun in the end is an, an inanimate object. It, it is something that can only do what the person holding it makes it do. So there's a very important cultural shift that must occur as well. And taking all of these together, it's a very monumental task to overtake, especially when you've got so many forces inside the country working against it. Mm. Well, that is correct. but. A presidential role is also a presidential role is also monumental. What will the president do now that Congress has criticized him for having not addressed the issue of gun violence in a State of the Union address? 
I think knowing as Trump as well as anyone does, I think he's probably either going to ignore the issue altogether or he's going to go on Twitter and complain about it, uh, likely claim that uh, Democratic influenced forces are trying to take people's guns away. This is a common scare tactic that has been used for uh, quite a long time. I, I don't think the president will change his position on this anytime soon. It's it's like getting blood from a stone to try to make Trump change his position on uh, anything uh, when you're trying to make him do it. He frequently flip-flops for seemingly no reason. But I think on the issue of something like gun control, uh, given that weapons manufacturers have stood behind the president, uh, not just for domestic but international uh, use of weapons as well, particularly the military industrial complex, I think that Trump is very highly funded by many of the arms manufacturers. And I, I don't think that Trump is going to go against it anytime soon, uh, not to mention that much of his primary base, uh, that uh, 40 or 30 percent of the population that's going to believe in him no matter what, are very pro-gun rights to begin with. And to even take a position like that would be to alienate them.